Greetings and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, where the iron-hearted Mexican Socialist Republic continues its campaign to conquer all of Central America and become the preeminent communist power in the Americas, spreading her green dawn across all the world. And to that end, we have already conquered Guatemala and Honduras, and next on our target list are the El Salvadorians, whom we are currently justifying war with. 14th of May, that justification will be complete, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow we attack. Uh, we better actually get our forces sorted out. We'll get old uh, Gilardo here to organize the troops with his uh, inimitable fashion that he is capable of doing because, of course, of his cocky bravado and uh, very fine tash, not to mention excellent military-style haircut. Um, so, yeah, we'll let him just kind of get on with that. Whilst we take a look at other things, we do have some alerts here. We've got free military factories. Uh, so let's increase production of our towed artillery by one. We captured those from Honduras just now. Justification for conquering El Salvador has been completed. Excellent. Well, we'll wait for our troops to get into position and then we will declare war. Our naval dockyards are also complete. Um, we don't have anything to build yet. As yet, our researchers have not managed to elevate our technology above that of the canoe. But they promised me it's on the way. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get some of these uh, trade canoes built um, for, uh, for the purposes of trading with the rest of the world. We've also got insufficient resources now. We need some more steel. So we'll get some steel from our very fine friends in the Soviet Union. Uh, thanks for that. Steel guys, bring forth your steel and let us use it to build many fine things. Uh, our equipment effort is currently underway. Our destroyer effort, I mean our destroyer research, the boffins, uh, creating destroyer level 1922 technology canoes, reverse engineered from one that we managed to find on the back of a lorry somewhere. Um, will soon be completed, along with transport ships, which will allow us to set up naval invasions, which will be important because pretty soon... Um, have they actually gotten into position yet, these troops? Uh, let's, let's speed time up a little bit and actually let's turn off these day-night cycles, as cool as they are. Um, we'll turn off the day-night cycles, we'll wait for the army to get into position, and then we will prepare to attack. However, uh, once we have done that, we really need to think about our next step because I think Central America is going to fall pretty quickly. We've then got to invade the other side of Panama, which we'll need a navy for. Once we've got a navy and we've got the ability to perform naval invasions, we could, of course, just go on and engage in a glorious war for South America. Um, but if South America is, is kind of on the large side and might take a while. And a lot of it is this kind of basically just rainforest just the amazon rainforest like a big swathe of it is just amazon rainforest it's not very interesting to us um so we need to have a think about that we do have well we're a little bit low on political power at the moment um but i have a plan however before we get to the south america we could always take out some of these islands we could take cuba for ourselves we probably have to avoid the united kingdom ones for the time being but we could certainly take uh, Haiti here, we could take the Dominican Republic, I think this is probably the United States, yeah, we couldn't take any of these just yet. Maybe when uh, the war eventually starts with the great United States on our northern border, maybe then uh, we could. But so far they don't seem to have minded about the fact that we have totally... Um, We've totally conquered countries that they guaranteed the independence of. Speaking of conquering countries that they guarantee the independence of, um, Guiardo, it's time for you to plan an offensive. Plan your offensive and prepare to attack. 20% uh, because, of course, minus 20% because, of course, the division is still preparing at this time. We'll let him prepare for a little while. When can we attack uh, Nicaragua? 209 of 220, the 14th of June. All right, that's not too far away. We actually probably should should order the attack pretty soon and at last our boffins have finally managed to reverse engineer the destroyer we found on the back of a lorry and figured out how to make it float again um it is of course 1922 level technology and frankly it's a bit rubbish um in fact it's very rubbish naval firepower two torpedo attack three anti-air two compared to a 1936 destroyer torpedo attack five naval firepower three anti-air five uh, let's just get straight on and research the destroyer level 2. Um, we will build, however, a couple of those 1922, or maybe just one 1922 destroyer. Um, let's get this to one. 
Uh, so when this is finished, we'll get a 1922 destroyer underway. And um, at the very least, we can use it as a sort of local patrol boat. You know, I mean, it can replace the canoe man who is canoeing around uh, all of Mexico at the moment um, with, you know, something a little bit fancier. Even if it's 1922s, it's still better than a canoe, right? Uh, let's unpause it. I don't know why we paused it then. Oh, because we were looking, of course, at our technologies, um, which are coming along nicely. Equipment effort is coming along nicely. So this political power question, are you guys ready to attack it? No, we'll wait for you to prepare. We might as well. We don't really want to sustain losses if we can avoid it. I've been a bit gung-ho with sending my troops in when they've had disadvantages that they don't really need. Um, and I think probably we want to try and avoid such uh, craziness. We've got a free dockyard. We must have built a dockyard. Did we have a, a dockyard in, the, in our construction queue? Uh, I didn't think we did. What we will do, actually, is we'll top up our construction queue with some more uh, factories, I think. There we go. We just we just want lots and lots of factories. The more factories, the better. We want to get that last research slot unlocked as quickly as possible, basically. Which means factories. The faster, the more factories we have, the faster we can build more factories, and eventually, uh, the better we will be. Justification for invading Nicaragua has been completed. All right, you know what? We, we're going to have to get this war started. Are you prepared yet? You're still not prepared. Minus 20% because the division is preparing. I actually don't know. Force comparison. We are stronger. We are way stronger. We're not just a little bit stronger. We are way stronger. They might be preparing because they're waiting for artillery to come in. Uh, so frankly, we might as well just go ahead and attack because it's going to be ages before the artillery comes in. Um, we, we need like 375 units and we're producing 1.14 uh, a day. And that is the best that we can do. Oh, we've finished construction of our convoy. So let's get a destroyer ordered with uh, three things working on it. It's going to take about a third of a year. Again, we actually only want one because I think, hopefully, we should have the second level of destroyer tech by the time that is completed. Um, are, are you going in? Oh, we haven't declared war yet, have we? <laughs> That's why. Declare war! Why is it that none of the minions in my Mexican Republican... Um, Mexican Communist Socialist Republic of Mexico. Why is it that none of them have any initiative of their own? I order an attack on a country, so we haven't declared war in it. Clearly we were going to declare war in it. I mean, we had a war justification, and therefore it was clearly our intention to indeed execute that justification uh, and execute the war itself. Um, but apparently not. Apparently we have to. We have to act explicitly state that that is our intention. Look, we're completely surrounding them. Giliardo has, has another masterful plan. He's out here in one of these like armies leading the charge as they all come in towards the center. And I think that's probably going to be it for San Salvador um, and indeed El Salvador for which it is named. Their, 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 time, is, their time is nigh, um, or at least it will be nigh very soon indeed. Um, what I was going to do actually with my second army here is I was going to employ the garrison function because, you know, I, I, I'm a little bit worried that America might get a bit shirty about what we're doing here, conquering all these countries of whose independence they have guaranteed. Speaking of, El Salvador is the latest of those, so uh, we will just take El Salvador for ourselves. We'll get uh, the guys lining up on the new front line. Um, so yeah, what I was going to use was the garrison area function. This assigns orders to divisions within an army to spread out over the assigned area and guard important cities, ports, and other objects, as well as handle local resistance and minor enemy presence. Um, so I thought I'd just see what he did with it, really. I mean, we'll want to have that fallback line at some point uh, set in, but we don't need to worry about that unless an actual battle starts. So as long as we know that it's there, it's fine. So instead, we're just going to garrison uh, this area this whole front line, basically, the whole thing. We don't have to worry too much about this because um, how important is this little stretch? Frankly, I don't think it's in enormously important. I mean, you know, let's just add it as well. He's probably going to need reinforcing to be able to adequately defend such a large area. Um, but seeing as we have the capability, I thought it was worth using it. Look, we've got another guy here. Let's assign him and he can go and help. Uh, oh, industrial focus completes. So we've finished our Equipment Effort 2, so we can go on to Equipment Effort 3, which has a minus 100% reduced ahead of time penalty for infantry weapons. But actually, I think I'd rather start down the Doctrine path. 
because we should really start getting doctrines in for our infantry seeing as we're using them so heavily transport ship research has been completed excellent that'll give us basic naval invasion uh, we could go for landing craft but that's a bit ahead of time at the moment uh, and frankly we don't need it for the sort of naval invasions that we're going to do hopefully um, it should be essentially fine um, I think we might want to get submarines you know uh, but also we might want to get fighters uh, but also we might want to get doctrines and stuff um, let's get some submarines we'll add some submarines to our naval capacity uh, I'm, I'm a little bit all over the place I have to say with the research at the moment but I just want everything there's so many good toys um, and, and I want it all for myself and um, for my men because they deserve it they're the best uh, let's order ourselves up an attack here uh, on Nicaragua. We will, of course, remember to declare war on Nicaragua this time. Send. The Mexican Socialist Republic has declared war on Nicaragua. We'll let them prepare for a little bit. Um, I don't think we can let them prepare indefinitely because 318? How long is it actually going to take to reduce, to fill this? Does it tell us? Uh, with the current daily balance, we will fill our needs in 238 days. We're not going to wait 238 days. Um, for the army to be reinforced, so uh, let's just... Are they well organized? They are well organized, so we'll just execute the attack right away. Uh, and we'll let uh, Guiardo organize and manage that for us whilst we go off and do other things. We've got 138 political power here. And one thing that I was thinking might be nice uh, is to foment a little bit of rebellion in South America. Why conquer South America when we concede the ideas of communist among the fertile minds of the working classes within, uh, well, where else but Brazil? Because it already has the incredible good fortune to be green. Um, and of course, this is the green dawn, the green communist dawn that, that, that he's just won. He's just won the war without even breaking a sweat. Um, thanks for that, pal. That was awesome. Um, let's get the forces up to the next front line. There we go. Move up to the next front line. Have we got justification here yet? Uh, 10th of August. All right. Justification for conquering Panama has been completed. All right. Well, we'll, we'll get on and conquer Panama soon. You know what I might do? I might start justifying war against Cuba. Just in case we decide that we, just, that we do want to actually go to war with Cuba. Um, let's do it. Justify goal. Conquer Cuba. It's done. It's done. We're going to begin. They are the nefarious democratic union led by Jose Agrippino Barnett. Um, the, obviously, I mean, he's like one of these clones. There are many of this guy ruling all of these countries around here. I think it's possibly some kind of alien plot. Uh, justification for conquering Costa Rica has been completed. So where are you? Are you in position yet, men? Not quite. Very nearly. Uh, let's plan the offence. There we go. We've planned the offence. Uh, once again, we're not going to wait for the division to be prepared. We'll just send them in. Because they've been doing so thoroughly well uh, to date with that. We do need to declare war again. Um, it kind of should say, if you execute an attack order... Do not think if you execute an attack order on a country you're not actually at war with it should ask you if you wish to declare war especially if you've got a war justification in place mexican socialist republic declared war on costa rica yeah i know i, I was the one that did it so as i was saying i want to ferment a bit of rebellion here i think and i'm going to do it in brazil because it's green and we are the green dawn spreading the communist message across the americas um and uh, creating like you know a glorious workers paradise it's, we've won again um they, they are just they're falling like like dominoes aren't they it's crazy it's absolutely crazy uh move the troops up to the panamanian panamanian border um and plan an offense there there and there yeah all three territories please we can't conquer the second bit until we have got ourselves sorted out let's just slow it down for a second because we need to complete what we're talking about here in South America. Um, I'm trying to explain my glorious plan for spreading communist rebellion across the Americas. Um, now, what I'm going to do, you see, is I'm going to boost the party popularity for the Communist Party. This guy here, look, Gutierlo Vargas of Brazil, leading the non-aligned Estado Nova party in Brazil. He is clearly the most bourgeois of bourgeois leaders. He is uh, undoubtedly personally responsible for the oppression of all the 
noble and upstanding working classes of the great nation of Brazil. And we Mexican communists feel that it is about time that the message of communism was spread to Brazil. And so we're going to send in our agitators and our spies and our political activists uh, and anyone else we can find, quite frankly. I mean, dinner ladies, um, people with wheelbarrows. We're going to send them all to Brazil and they're going to wander around telling people about just how amazing it is to be a communist. Um, and hopefully uh, that will convince them and we can then cause a rebellion to occur. We can cause a communist revolution in Brazil and then they'll be our friends. It's bound to work, right? It's bound to be perfect. Uh, and then, you know, maybe we can kind of divide up the rest of South America between us. So whilst that ferments there in Brazil and prepares for uh, the glorious time to come, we'll focus on these little islands and things. Um, I think that makes sense. I think Cuba could actually put up a bit of a fight. I, I suspect that they're going to be waiting um, for my invasion and we do have to land somewhere. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but that'll come in time. We do have a free military factory. In fact, we have a couple of free military factories, obviously, in the, the newly conquered regions. We've got new stuff, so we'll put those into cranking out the artillery. There we go. Full on on the artillery. Uh, likewise, we also got another couple of naval dockyards, so we'll put them into filling uh, filling more work on our uh, Mark One destroyer, the canoe-class destroyer, as we like to call it. Got some exclamation marks here. Unable to move to the province along its path, because we haven't declared war yet, probably. Declare war on Panama! The last great war of Central America! This is all we need now, just here, a little naval invasion, and here, and we'll own all of the Central Americas. Unless, of course, Colombia is technically considered in, to be in Central America, but I guess we'll find out when we get there. We also need some more resources, so let's get some trade in. We need more steel, many more steels from our allies in the Soviet Union, please. Excellent. Uh, how's everything else going? We do have some air wings available, which we could use, I guess, to attack Panama. Uh, we might as well deploy them here, I guess. 36 close air support, bring them in. Yep, that's good. Uh, also, execute the order. I don't think there's actually anyone there to stop us. Um, not that we're going to actually be able to conquer Panama until we can cross this, this bit of sea, which is going to require uh, that destroyer to be finished. So, if you guys could just... Wow! Um, world news! Wow, we'll come back to that in a second. World news! The Munich Agreement. German demands for the Sudan territory in Czechoslovakia, which is home to a considerable German minority, have intensified. At a summit held in Munich, Germany, Britain, France and Italy sought to find a diplomatic solution to the so-called Sudan crisis. Czechoslovakia was not invited to attend. An agreement was reached in which Germany annexes the Sudanland, but will not pursue any further territorial gains in Europe which I'm sure they can be thoroughly trusted on. Mr. Chamberlain spoke to crowds in London. For the second time, a Prime Minister has returned from Germany, bringing peace with honour. And by honour, I mean not honour. But I believe it will be peace for our time. And by our time, I mean the next 20 minutes or so. Um, no war this year then. Well, that's good to hear. In, in the meantime, France and Britain announce an alliance. Calling upon the bonds forged during the Great War, France has requested a formal alliance with Britain, citing unspecified threats against the stability of Europe. Today their request was approved by the British Parliament and France has joined the Allies. They are preparing for the worst. Frankly, we hope that the worst happens uh, in as messy a way as possible and it drags old uh, America in with it. North America, United States and possibly Canada as well. Uh, I mean, ultimately it would be nice to spread the Green Dawn to the Canadian shores as well. I mean, we could ferment... <gasps> Maybe we could ferment a communist rebellion in Canada too. Could we do that? Boost party popularity? We totally could. Daily drift 0.1, cost 0.25 political power per day. That's more than a quarter of our current political power gain. Worth thinking about. If we can improve our political power gain a bit, then another revolution might be on the cards. We can get a new guy possibly to give us more political power. We don't want democracies, we don't want fascists. Popular figurehead, national unity plus 15%. Let's get a captain of, captain of industry. Yeah, that sounds good. 
uh, construction speed plus 10%, infrastructure construction speed plus 10%, refinery construction speed plus 10%. All of that fine industry uh, shall be done. Computing machines have been developed. Many, many fine possibilities in computing machines. Trust me, I'm, I'm like an expert on it. 1938, we could get uh, radar possibly, or maybe we could start down a land doctrine. We'd have to pick a land doctrine first, of course. Um, so our four choices are mobile warfare doctrine. Mobile warfare is focused on speed and maneuvering to cut off or disorganize enemy forces. So this is the blitzkrieg, effectively. Superior firepower doctrine. Doctrine focuses on throwing shells, not men, at the enemy. Our manpower is precious. Bullets are cheap. Um, I quite like that idea. That sounds like a sort of, you know, communist sort of thing to do. Not a you know, Russian communist thing where they basically just went for the mass assaults. Perfect weapons are overrated. A large number of good enough weapons are the path to victory. Um, yeah, mass assault and so on and so forth. Extensive planning and preparation before engaging in battle is the key to success. Grand plan doctrine. I like superior firepower doctrine. You know what? I think we're going to go with this. Um, what does this lead through? It has superior firepower. Soft attack plus 20% enables uh, suppressive barrage tactics. Delay, uh, which enables the tactic delay. Mobile defense. All infantry and motorized and mechani mechanical infantry. Mechanized infantry. All infantry and motorized slash mechanized infantry has a defense of plus 20%. Enables elastic defense. Nice. Uh, integrated support. Regimental combat teams. Yeah, I think this is the way to go. We're not... We haven't really focused down count, like tanks and stuff yet, so um, we're not going to take like a blitzkrieg approach. It's going to be superior firepower doctrine. Uh, that is going to be our choice, although we haven't actually completed our doctrine effort yet for 50% research bonus, but we will do in like seven days. So I think we can. I think we can afford to jump ahead here a little bit. Let's do it. Research that plus 20% soft attack has to be a good thing. Excellent. How we doing? Uh, let's unpause it. Close our political screen there. We do not need to see. Uh, we also have this clone guy, by the way, Dino Enka. Um, he's just another one of the clones who, who likes to rule uh, various and assorted countries. Maybe one day, um, you know, we'll discover that actually he's like a robot or an alien or something. Um, but as long as he is promoting the values and ideals of the Mexican Socialist Republic, he'll do just fine as a figurehead. Um, and, uh, yeah. yeah. Daily democracy support. Minus 0.02. Collectivist ethos. We don't want no stinking democracies. Uh, although that said, we do actually have a fairly significant minority here for the Partido de la Revolución Mexican. Non-aligned. National focus completed. Doctrine effort. Excellent. Uh, should we go straight for Doctrine Effort 2? 50% research bonus for land doctrines. Let's go for Equipment Effort 3. I quite like the idea that we're going to focus on, on our infantry forces and building them up to be like technologically superior, not just throwing masses of troops at them. I know it's not exactly what we've done to date, but it's what we intend to do in the future. Um, so let's go with that. Good. Uh, we've got Free Naval Dockyards uh, because we finished building that destroyer. Have we got destroyer two level tech yet? We really don't. Uh, we really don't. But because we've finished the first destroyer, we can uh, dispatch it to do stuff. We'll make one more. We'll make one more patrol boat um, just because we can. Uh, and we'll take our existing destroyer, which should be around here somewhere, having built it. Is that it? There it is. There's our existing destroyer. Um, so, in order to attack here in Panama, we're going to need to do a naval invasion. So let's get that sorted out now, shall we? Uh, first of all, Dino Enka needs to plan a naval invasion. Um, and he's going to have to reduce the number of troops that he's going to send on this naval invasion, I think, because uh, I think we've got like a, a, yeah, look, capacity of 10. So, basically, we're going to do a naval invasion order. It's going to go from this dockyard uh, to, I think, probably here. So we'll land here because it's probably going to be less well defended and then we'll take Panama City itself. Um, and that has a maximum capacity of 10 troops. So we're going to have to leave a few troops behind here. So let's... Uh, what's How many troops have we actually got selected? Uh, we've got 13 in the army, so we need to leave three behind. And then we can assign those. Division assignment. 
a sign to that. There we go, that has worked, so we've now got 10 units assigned to this naval invasion. The invasion itself can't be carried out yet because, first of all, our troops haven't got there yet, and secondly, we need naval supremacy along all of the areas on the path, um, which we need to do. send our, our destroyer out, our 1922 canoe-class destroyer, which hopefully is not going to encounter any resistance because I'm not sure how much of a fight it can put up. We'll just do a basic patrol, uh, and we need to patrol this region, so th this whole region, uh, and this region, which covers the path of the invasion, um, and we can do a third region as well. Uh, so we might as well, we might as well have it actually being a coastal patrol boat and patrolling the coast of uh, Mexico. Can we? We can't do a fourth region, so we can't do the whole coast. We'll have to get a separate fleet to, like, you know, look after the Gulf of Mexico here at some point. But there we go, that's it. Now that has uh, received its orders. Should we give him a commander as well? Admiral Paul Sores, Superior tactician. Number of ships in the first contact, plus 25%. I mean, he's only going to be... Gonna, he's just going to be commanding, um, like, you know, the, the canoe-class destroyer. Can we rename this? I don't think we can. Uh, the Ponsanio Arega, which means canoe in uh, Mexican, I can assure you right now. Go on, let's give him a general. Um, I think this is the guy, right? This is the canoe guy. This is the guy who was the leader of the Admiralty, who like manned our one canoe on all of his travels around the country uh, for all of those years. Um, and now he finally has been given a 1922 level technology, technology destroyer. Uh, and frankly, he's going to absolutely love it. That should give us uh, naval superiority here. Let's have a look and see. Our fleet does not have access to this region, uh, but naval supremacy is 100%, so apparently our fleet does have access to that region. I don't know what it's talking about. Naval supremacy is 100%, so we're absolutely fine. We're, we are fine to execute the order as soon as the troops arrive in the port. Dano Enka is going to lead his men, his shock cavalry and his infantry units on the final assault on Panama to secure the Central Americas. But of course... That's going to have to wait until next time because look, it's 30 minutes in. Uh, so, fantastic. There we go. The Mexican Socialist Republic has continued its advance. Its conclusion, the conclusion of its war in Central America is at hand. And then onward to Cuba, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, and even Colombia and the South American countries. Will America, will the USA, wow, look, they've put a lot of troops on the border. Will they wake up and decide it's time for them to attack? Um, will we need to do something about uh, Army 2, which needs a much better name because he's put all of his troops down here on this little spur of land? Frankly, uh, answers will come when they come. But until then, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I have been Weird Wizard, and I will see you later.